Chapter 1 She was different. I knew this when I was just a kid, not in the sense I know now, but rather as an uneasy feeling in my stomach, an anxiety I wasn't old enough to recognize. I was fair. She was a brunette. I was Lucky Kimberly Ann, the pretty and smart sister whose name was always called for the correct answer. She was unlucky Kathy Renee, the plain and troubled sister whose name was never called at all. We were sisters. I loved and hated her. We shared a double bed during our childhood. The only thing changing during those years was the bedspread. Sometimes it was purple and nubby, scratching our tender skin when we pulled it up to our chins. Sometimes it was a simple quilt, never a Dutch doll or star flower pattern, but one made from our worn-out clothes, sewed together without a clever stitch. For the longest, our bed was covered in a white chenille with fringe trailing on the hardwood floor. It changed with time, but my sister, the little girl I slept with every night, remained the same. While I played the clarinet in the junior high band and won ribbons in track and field, she remained the same. A little girl with brown eyes, neither stunning nor intense. I think she always knew what people thought of her. She wanted to say something in return, and for many years I waited for her to say it. But I learned she was incapable of cruelty. We were born 16 months apart, of the same mother and father, yet our lives would become as different as two planets orbiting around the sun, never to fully understand each other, despite our years of circling. But in those early years, before the doctors and the education specialist, we were happy in our ignorance of each other. She didn't know I was smarter and healthier, and I didn't know she couldn't do story problems or read beyond the fourth grade level. Before I knew she would always be different, we were perfect little girls in our happy world. Our bedtime ritual was one of friendship and camaraderie, except for the nights I would inflict my privilege as the older sister. It began with a warning before the lamp clicked off. Stay on your side of the bed. Here's the border. Don't cross it, I'd say to her, drawing an imaginary line in the center of the bed with my index finger. She met my challenge with confusion. Thinking it was a game, she'd toss her right foot over the imaginary border. This was returned with an elbow to her side. She then rolled to the far side of the bed, as far away from me as she could go without falling off the bed. All I could see was the wild mass of black hair, neither curly nor straight, just thick and coarse upon a pink and white pajama top, as her chest rose and fell in anguished sobs. Unlike her, I was capable of cruelty. But on those perfect nights of my early childhood, we would jump into the bed at the same time no one wanted to be first. We only thought of the immediate. There were no regrets from yesterday or anxiety for tomorrow. All we knew was to jump on the bed, up and down, up and down, laughing and holding hands. It ended when my father knocked on our bedroom door. Quit the monkey shines, girls. Those days were sealed tightly from the outside world. I didn't know what was fair and what was unfair. I didn't know about luck. That random toss of the dice, determining who you will be for the rest of your life. I didn't know then my sister had an IQ of 85. My dad didn't know either. But I think my mom knew all along and hid it from us. The one certainty I knew in my childhood was every day would end the same way. My sister, 
lying next to me in our double bed. Light out, sissy. Night-night, cat-cat. I'd click the light off between my thumb and index finger as perfect silence covered us, erasing any imaginary border that had come between us the night before.